What is going on, Wolfpack? Savage here. I hope that you're having a good day, and I hope that you're getting a lot of wins in Warzone. Now, in this series, we'll be breaking down and analyzing some random quads gameplay. During this analyzation, I'm going to be having a focus on circle rotation, as well as map awareness, gunplay, and, of course, target prioritization. Now, also on top of that, of course, we'll be discussing teamwork and the importance of teamwork, because normally when we spectate these videos, there's really not much teamwork going on. And if you guys want to dive into some duos, trios, or quads, you have got to utilize your comms, you've got to utilize your ping in order to get better. But if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel, join the Wolf Pack today, also leave a like on the video. Let's get this video to 700 likes. And also, if you guys are tired of playing by yourself, make sure you join our Discord community. We're at 4,000 strong and utilize the Looking for Groups pages to your advantage. We have got a lot of people in there finding groups and pulling off W's, so make sure you guys get in on that, especially if you guys have not solidified a win yet. But without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into the gameplay. Now, the purpose of the series is to put you guys in other players' positions that you guys might not find yourself in or haven't found yourself in yet. That way, if you do find yourself in a similar situation, you guys will have the know-how to get yourself out of it and get into a better position and or outplay the enemy in that exact spot. I know this game is rough. Most battle royales are rough to get into, and this is probably one of the hardest ones. So I really want to get this series out there to help newer players improve and help players who already have somewhat of an understanding get more wins and get better. Strategy is a mindset a lot of players don't have in video games. And unfortunately, you're going to have to start developing that mindset because a lot of these games now are very strategic. All right, so here we are spectating the ECU squad, and they look to be dealing with somebody camping in these cranes. Now, I, for one, am not a fan of these cranes at all. This is not a spot you should ever land in the beginning of the match, mostly because the loot's so spread out. It's going to take you guys a long time to find the loot you need in order to get some fights, and also, you're not going to get many kills. Now, this squad here, unfortunately, is not paying attention to anything going on. This guy in this tower right here that we're sniping at or we're looking at is clearly on the mini map. He has been since we started spectating the team. And for some reason, these guys are just running around um, the next one over, allowing him to get some shots off at range and get the kill. So now we've already lost two teammates for no reason. And the sniper's sitting right here and he's moving. He's moving while he's ADS. There's never a reason for that. If you want to get a different position, just keep your crosshair lined up, but don't ADS and get to that position. And then as soon as you see the enemy peak, then you ADS. Doing this whole like walking while ADS just makes your scope move and just makes it harder to shoot the enemy. Okay, so he was able to get the knock some way, somehow. But again, <laughs> we're down teammates. We're down three teammates. This right here is glitched, clearly. Um, they're all three in the gulag. We're by ourselves. There's no one around us on our team, at least. And we know there's one enemy here. So guess what? I'm going to go ahead and use, again, process of elimination and just imagine that there's another three enemies nearby. Um, not to mention, we got the knock. We're not going to be able to climb up that thing to get the execution. So go ahead and throw that out of your head. Again, because there's four players somewhere, they're probably going to be closing in to get that res off and or sitting there baiting the ladder so they can get the kill. So I'm not a fan of jumping out of cover. In this position, he should just bail from the fight. I've already had a botched beginning. To be honest, I would go ahead and reset. There's not going to be much money here. And even if this team does survive, even if he does get away, he's going to have to get a loot all these random buildings, and it's going to take him a long time to gather enough money to get his teammates back should they lose the gulag, or he's going to have to grab a most wanted bounty, which, as you see, there's nothing around us. And lastly, there's a guy sitting up here too. So we have the down over here, and we have a guy over here. So I see his jumping over the wall and getting completely blitzed down. All right, we spot the guy up top. We whip out the sniper rifle. Now, that's something you don't want to do unless you're an absolute unit with a sniper. You do not want to put yourself out in the open and try to get some flick shots on the enemy. I wouldn't even say flick. He was just... Hard scoping. And then there it is right there. You put yourself out in the open when utilizing no cover. He stood in the middle of the uh in the middle of the opening trying to ADS and get that sniper shot off. Alright, so here we are. Javison won his gulag and he is flying down on the vehicle. Now in this position again, if it's solo quads, I would go ahead and risk it for the biscuit and just get the most wanted bounty and get it over with. Go ahead and get your team back. Don't worry about collecting money. Don't worry about anything. Just get the most wanted bounty. And there's one to our left. I don't know if you guys didn't know this, but you don't have to drive on the street. These vehicles can actually jump off hills and it really won't damage it much. But he wants to obey the laws of the land and he's going to go ahead and make sure he doesn't get a ticket or get arrested. All right, so we've got the most wanted bounty and out this position. There's one of two things you can do. And it just depends on the skill level that you're at. Um, in this position, if it was solo quads and I'm in quarry, I'm going to go ahead and just run around quarry and try to collect money. That way I can hopefully get a loadout. Now... 
You're a most wanted bounty, so you need to be aware. If there's a team near you, you're probably going to get shit on. But again, that's where the skill level comes into play. If you guys aren't feeling that, he's really staying on the road. If you guys are not feeling that confident with doing it, and I definitely don't blame you, um, go ahead and grab the vehicle like he's doing and get safe. Play the edge of the map, play the edge of the circle. Wait for that three minutes to go ahead and wind down. That way you get your entire team back. Also, he does have $3,600. He could waste the money to buy his teammate back. But honestly, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do it at all. I would hold on to it so I can get my loadout drop. All right, so now we just looted. And now we're in a position to where we have $4,000. You can get your teammate back if you want. But with only a minute and a half left, I really wouldn't go near a buy station um, and risk getting killed. You can also dive these trucks off mountains. He just, he doesn't care. He, he wants to stick to the road. That's fine. <laughs> You know, every now and then in Grand Theft Auto, when you decide you want to stop at the red light to pretend you're a, you pretend you're one of the NPCs, that, I think that's what he's doing right here. Oh, he's driving on the wrong side of the road. We're coming to get you now, brother. But he's, it looks like he's going to go ahead and buy his teammate back, which is fine. But again, time's of the essence, and I definitely would not get out of the vehicle. Maybe he's not buying his teammate back. He really wanted that sniper ammo, huh? All right, so a couple things he's doing wrong here. One, he needs to play it up, right? Go ahead and pop your plates. Pretty common. Not going to go in depth with that. Two, again, most wanted bounty on you. You have a giant ping above your head. If you decide you want to go around a compound of loot, that's fine, but it doesn't look like that's what this kid wants to do. But he's risking it to buy his teammate back. The fact that he was at the buy station and literally looked at ammo and ran from the buy station without buying his teammate back was crazy to me. Uh, again, if, the longer it takes for you to buy your teammate back, the more vulnerable you guys are sitting at buy stations, which most of the time are pretty hot. All right, so our teammates are coming back from most wanted bounty. It was a success. And again, most wanted bounties aren't really that dangerous when it's early game, mostly because People are so spread out throughout the circle. Now, if you're in a hot spot like Promenade, downtown, uh, airport, you know, things like that. Yeah, you're probably going to have a lot of trouble. But if you're playing on the outskirts of the map like Quarry most of the time, um, farmland, things like that. You have a high probability of staying safe because not many people are going to be on the outskirts. All right, but now let's look at the money situation, right? So you have Chucky that marked the buy station, um, which is a great call. But you guys need to get together. You guys need to buy your loadout. You need to do it now. You got plenty of money to do it. You've got almost, what, $15,000? So instead of sitting here looting these guns and deciding, do I want the AK? Do I want the Kilo? Do I want the C4? Do I want the stun grenade? What do I want? Go get your loadout and stop wasting the time. Not to mention, we're again, we're on the edge of the circle. We're allowing the circle to dictate our future if we keep playing the edge of the circle. I don't mind playing the edge of the circle if that's the strategy you want to use. But these guys are just doing it just because. There's no strategy to it. And you can tell based on their gameplay. Now, at this point, I would consider this mid-game. If it drops below 100 players, I don't care how big the circle is. It's usually in my head um, mid game. And the reason being is because everyone's going to have their loadouts or at least most people will. So what you don't want to do is get in this position. What you don't want to do is get in this position where you have to fight people with loadouts and you don't have yours. But Savage, they want to get their free loadout. And that's fine. Go ahead and get the free loadout, baby. Rock it. But buy another one and get ghosts. Or utilize your money, get UAVs. But you have to have that decision made in your head at the beginning of the game. Don't just sit on this money for no reason. And another reason why I say to always get your loadout right off the bat is so you can start hunting down people. We are, again, mid-game, and we have one kill. We only have one kill as a team. This game's been going on for about eight minutes now, and again, only one kill. So if you guys are trying to improve your aim, if you guys are trying to improve your accuracy, if you guys are trying to improve your gunplay, you need to get in some fights. So we've got an enemy down here, and we're just kind of staring at it. We're just kind of staring at them, watching them go. We're not shooting. We're not, you know, rotating. We're not coming up with a game plan. Uh, we, we're not really doing anything. We're just watching them shoot at somebody else. All right, I also want you guys to notice this. Now, when I tell you guys to place the dot on your screen, on the player, and then ADS or zoom in, whatever you want to say, there's a reason for it. A lot of players, a lot of newer players do this. They ADS, and then they try to drag the scopes and the crosshair to the enemy. What that does is it wastes time. So if you're going against another player who's slide canceling, bunny hop, and sweating his nuts off, he's going to shit on you because... It's going to take you a long time to ADS and transition that crosshair to find the target's head and get the shot off. By the time you're halfway to him, you're already going to be dead. So again, don't ever ADS and scan ADS. You want to lock onto the target with your crosshair like this right here, right? A little dot. And then once it's placed on his head, then ADS. Now, green is just pinging these enemies. He's pinging, he's pinging, he's pinging, he's pinging. And I love that he's pinging. But there's no reason to ping if you guys aren't going to hunt him down at all. You can ping him once and be like, hey, guys, there's, there's dudes over here. And let your team know, you know, there's guys. That's fine. But there's no reason to keep pinging them over and over and over again. Especially if you're not planning on fighting them. 
Now in this position, they have a vehicle, they have the loadout, they should go push them and get that fight won. They know where the enemies are and the enemies don't know where they're at. So at that point, these guys are in an advantage. I'm not exactly sure what he's doing right now. He needs to be dropping his money and spreading it out or buying something. He's sitting on $9,300. Weird, they bought their loadout. And the reason why I was telling them to buy the loadout earlier was so that they can grab their loadout, grab their classes, and then they can start hunting down players to kill. That was not smart. Do not go prone right here, brother. You can still probably see the top of your head. Now, of course, we have enemies. Now, of course, we have enemies over here clearly sniping at us, clearly shooting at us. One's the most wanted. Could be different teams. We don't know. In this position, we're kind of on level playing field. We're on a level ground. However, we do have a hill to our advantage with a cluster of rocks. So at this point, you need to work your way up in the hill, utilize the rocks, the trees, the ridges, and things like that to get the easy kill and get the high ground and shoot down on the enemy to get the easy headshot. You don't want to sit here and try to use the railroad tracks as cover. That's just not a play. Now, I'm not going to critique this man's aim that much because, well, you can just tell... You can just tell by the way his his stick movement is that he's a newer player. He probably hasn't had too much experience um, gaming. So we're not going to go in on him. Please be gentle on this man in the comment section. Also, when you're shooting at an enemy, again, remember, don't spray and pray. Wait for your crosshair to be lined up with the enemy and then shoot. Okay, and I want you guys to see that too. All right, so guys, I want you guys to focus on the jitter in his finger and also when he goes from one side of the train to the other side of the train, how he kind of overshoots it and has to recorrect. That comes down to ADS sensitivity. I speak about this a lot, and I want to always talk about ADS sensitivity because a lot of people don't watch every video. A lot of people, this may be the first video they ever see, and I want you guys to know the importance of setting your ADS sensitivity correctly. That's why when you try to shoot a target, you may overshoot the target, then you have to work your crosshair back to him. Because that split second that you overshoot the target and it takes you a little bit to recorrect, you could be dead. But I want you guys to see how he, how he just, he overshoots it, right? And instead of his crosshair going from here to here to here to here, it just goes way over here and then he has to recorrect it back here. And then it goes way over here and then he kind of recorrects it back over here. And again, during a gunfight, that extra time it takes to recorrect is freaking crucial. Crucial. But our teammates are in the car now. It looks like we're going to be playing super aggro. Now we're getting close to the target. If we jump out of the vehicle, you definitely want to have your SMG. He switches to it, so great decision there. But at this point, when he's on the vehicle, of course, put your weapon back to your long range and try to get the shots off. All right, so unfortunately for Purple, unfortunately for our dude, um, our team left us. <laughs> I don't know why, I don't know what happened, but he, he just dipped, bro. And I know these guys aren't randoms because they have the same clan tag, so I'm hoping they're utilizing voice comms. I really wish I could hear. I would love to hear it. Not to mention, always pay attention to your plates. All right, we have a, we have a four-wheeler driving to the right-hand side, and he just hopped out. Now, what concerns me is the fact that we're kind of in the open. We're jumping around. We're pretending like this is Fortnite. We're just jumping, letting ourselves known and things like that. And this guy's right over here. Now, he's not looking at us. He could just be looting inside of here and dipping off. But if he does happen to try to push across the street on foot, he's going to see us over here bunny hopping like little bunny foo-foo, and he's going he's gonna to shoot us, and he's going to kill us. So I don't like the fact that we're in this position, and we're not paying attention to our mini-map and keeping our crosshair on this area because, again, if he peeks, you could have the potential to shoot at him and get the kill and protect yourself. But because we're not, um, we have a high probability of getting shot by this guy. So you always want to be aware of minimap. That way you can find out where players are at. A lot of players that are watching these videos are like, man, I don't know how. I don't know how they find me. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> He's like, I don't know how these guys know where I'm at all the time. I don't know how these, these streamers get all these kills. It's because they're not just waiting for an enemy to run into their face. They're not just waiting for an enemy to run in front of their crosshair. They're looking at the minimap. They're listening for shots. They're listening for vehicles. They're looking for kill streaks being shot. And that's how they chase them down. And surprisingly, we go down. And now we're in a position where we have a self res. Now, we're safe from being killed from this guy. And we're popping the self res. His team should jump off of this building. Green should jump off this building and come finish off the self res. There's no reason for this man to have to waste the self res. And if his teammates were also paying attention to the minimap, they would know that he was down and they can come help him. But unfortunately, it looks like he's going to have to waste his self-res, which is definitely unfortunate. 
Oh, I hate seeing that. I really do, especially when the teammates are so close. Now, sometimes you have to use it. Your teammates are in a fight, things like that. That's fine. But these guys are not an immediate threat. There's no reason for that. All right. In this position here, Javison thinks that the guy shooting at us is still where he was at originally. But we know he's not because, again, we're paying attention to the minimap. The guy hopped back on the four-wheeler and he drove off to the next compound. So here we are scanning the area, wasting time, looking at nothing when we should be focused on, well, whatever else our team's focused on. Our teammates are shooting at someone else right now. That vehicle was, is already gone. That enemy's gone. And still we're just sitting here like, we know, I know he's here. All right, so I fast forward a little bit because we really haven't done anything. And uh, they happen to just not get in a fight. Although I think they're just shooting at people in the air. I don't know what's going on. But this team loves hugging the edge of the circle. And again, that's okay, but I'm not a huge fan of it. I really am not. If your idea is to do like a, a pinwheel motion around the edge of the circle, that's fine. But you you want to you want to push some fights. You don't want to just sit here safe on some rooftops trying to snipe people because that's not the strategy for the pinwheel motion. All right, our teammates in a fight right now. Our teammates in a fight. There's pings going off. We got a teammate down. A lot of shit's happening to our left hand side, and for some reason, we're still right here. Now, Savage has only been about five or six seconds, but that five or six seconds is crucial to your teammate getting executed. The moment you hear a ping, you need to look at it. Unless you're in an immediate fight, unless you're shooting at someone right then and there, the moment there's a red ping on the map, you need to instantly divert your crosshairs to it and start putting on shots with your teammate. That way you can get this fight won because there's a big berth over here. So if these guys kill your teammate and they hop in the big berth and they drive off to safety, you're gonna look like an idiot. Not to mention that would also indicate, hey, instead of standing on top of the hill, maybe I should fall back to this side and kind of head glitch basically what Chuck's doing. Chucky's, Chucky's got a good mindset. He's utilizing the ridge as, you know, somewhat of cover, and he's head glitching it, trying to snipe at the enemy. So we're kind of just standing up here. Okay, we're getting there. Oh, no, we're, go we're going back to the top. All right. So we're kind of just standing here in the open with our head to toe exposed. Meanwhile, Chucky, he's making a good play. And unfortunately, Green's going to have to take some gas damage to try to get the res off. I don't know what his gas mask situation is. If there's no gas mask, you need to let him die. But if he does have a gas mask and he's safe behind some cover, a ridge, a tree, whatever, go ahead and pop the res. But I don't like the fact that we're sitting here just super tunnel visioned and hyper focused on getting an execution. We really should be worried about a couple things. One, getting safe. Two, providing cover for our teammates. And three, not allowing our entire body to be exposed. <laughs> and that's why. So the team ended up getting a big bird foot, And now we're down. Now we're down two teammates. Actually, we're down three teammates. Unfortunately, Green did not have a gas mask. He tried to go get the res off. Um, it didn't work. And he ended up bleeding out. Um, himself so a lot of things wrong with this fight a lot of things wrong with this fight if you don't have an enemy in your crosshair don't shoot your gun right <laughs> i mean dude how many bullets did he put into the side of the truck right if you want to shoot the driver's side of the truck and try to get the headshots it's fine but watch what happens here all right so we have 70 bullets in our gun right there's no body there's no players visible there's a truck of course an enemy vehicle right <laughs> But there's no players. You can't get a kill in this position. So at 70 bullets right now, how many does he waste? 23 bullets. He shoots 23 bullets. Beautiful God-given bullets. Um, for nothing. For no reason at all. He throws a sticky, which is an okay play. Um, unfortunately, one sticky is not going to blow up that vehicle. He got close. He got close to getting one kill. Oh, he got him. Yeah, rest in peace, brother. Rest in peace. And then he goes in there to get his place. What a savage. Ruthless. I love it. I love it. So here we are again in another position, just like early game. Where we're playing solo quads. Our teammates are down, unfortunately, and we all have matching clan tags. That's like the trend right now. I love it. Um, What do we do? What do we do? Do we get a most wanted bounty? Do we go for a supply run? What are the options, Savage? I don't understand what we should do. It's a mid to late game. It's pretty late right now. Um, there's 43 people up right now. There's 42 enemies total. So you really need to be careful grabbing the most wanted bounty. If you do grab the most wanted, which I wouldn't recommend, but if you decide you want to grab the most wanted bounty, get a vehicle, drive to it, grab it, and just drive around the edge of the map. Again, uh, now there's an enemy in front of us on top of the building. I don't know if you saw him or not. I'll show you guys once we look at it. Oh, never mind. Wait, wait, wait for it. Is he going to look in this time? Okay, this building right here. There's an enemy's head kind of cresting and he was running back to the doorway. Um, so he needs to be careful right here. Unfortunately, the position we're in, there's no vehicles around us, unfortunately. And there's the most wanted bounty by us. I would scrap the most wanted bounty idea, right? I would try to, again, to loot this area and see if I can find a couple hundred bucks because there's a huge probability that you will be able to. All 
Right, there's a, there's, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> Man had no idea what shot him. He just shot his gun because, okay, hold up. Let's rewind this. Now, unfortunately, when it comes to camping, you can't predict that. Even I didn't predict that, right? Um, it is Boneyard. There's a lot of rooftops and these freaking buildings to his left right now. This big ass warehouse. Of course, there's going to be somebody up on the third floor waiting for someone to run in. It's just the way the game is, unfortunately. But with saying that, there's no reason he should be in the open in the first place. He should be utilizing the walls and he should be moving fast and quickly. He shouldn't be sitting on the outskirts, just sitting there waiting to get shot in the back because that's essentially what happened but this right here he heard the enemy started getting shot at but unfortunately we crouched a little too long we shoot at a wall and we ultimately meet our meet our maker right and again that comes down to paying attention to your hit indicators so let's rewind and see what happened one he got shot look at the hit indicators and savage you pause the you pause the game that's not fair you got to train your eyes to instantly the moment you get shot to instantly instead of panicking look at your hit indicators because i know from this angle it's coming from that warehouse. So clearly he's got to be around here, whether he's inside or outside, we don't know yet. But the moment we get shot, instead of turning around, we know it's from behind us. So instantly just make your way around the edge of the building. Will you get shot by the other player? There's a huge chance, but I would rather not die by the guy behind me and try to push in and get the kill and have it a fair fight. You hate to see it. You hate to see it. Rest in peace to the, uh, the Ashum squad. Can we get some RIPs in the comments for the Ashum squad, please? Not sure what these guys are pinging. These guys are pinging themselves. Literally, he's pinging himself. But here we have a we have a player utilizing the Carnegie Eight with seven kills and the Ram, a pretty good combo. We have an entire team coming to the outside. We have an entire team coming to the outside. And they're gonna be vulnerable. Their objective at this point is they want to get either a across the field, which puts them in the open, or b they want to come across this hill to get to our compound, which again puts them in the open. So with saying that, they've already got two people camping in the right building. They can get some easy shots, but I would definitely, and if I was Paul and I would make my way to this building right here, get a different angle, get a different line of sight on the enemies and put shots on them from two different directions. The last thing you wanna do as a squad is sit on the same building. Because again, if you're the enemy and you're getting shot from one building, you're all gonna be looking at that building and the chance of getting a pick, 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 pick is very probable. However, if you're spread out on two different buildings or even three different buildings, if you look at orange, you guys are a lot harder to pick off one at a time because you're so spread out. So basically what happens is the enemy's in a position where they're walking up, la da 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 da, and then they get shot, <laughs> right? Right from the building in front of them. Then our entire team's like, oh shit, guys in this building, they're pinging the building, blah, blah, blah. This building right here is being pinged and everyone's focused on it. But because Orange is over here to the left, uh-uh, you guys better pay more attention. He's gonna have a whole different line of sight on this squad over here. And then they're gonna be like, holy shit, then they're gonna, get, they're gonna start panicking. They're like, damn, he's on two buildings. What the hell's going on? And then all of a sudden, Paulin's on this one. And it's like, whoa, what the, what's happening? And then you basically confuse the enemy, make them panic, and you win the fight. This is even a good strategy. I, I like it. The problem with this spot is you gotta be very careful. You gotta be very careful because I've been in this position before where I'm sitting on this roof and I'm trying to take out three or four guys. And as you can see, the sniper glare is already going on. But one thing you need to worry about is nades. Nades are very, very easy to throw on top of these buildings. So again, I'd rather be on the other building utilizing the, the big ass ridges. So just like I was telling you guys with sitting on multiple buildings and spreading out and making it harder for the enemy to shoot you, here is Paulin right here, front and center, the man, the myth, the legend, and he's tunnel vision on this guy. Meanwhile, we have three other enemies to our right-hand side. As you see on the mini-map, we have one, two, three, and then the guy that's already on this wall right here. Um, so I don't see Paulin surviving this shit. I stand corrected. They wiped the squad. Good shit. All right, but now we're in a position... Well, the circle's not going to favor us. And I want you guys to pay attention to the circle rotation. And if you look on the mini map, there's a wide opening, the street and the railroad tracks. And that splits the circle into two for me. Um, and about 20% of the circles favored on our side and 80% on the other. Again, play the odds. There's a huge probability, an 80% probability, that the circle is going to hop over the street. And you're going to have to run the open. Put yourself vulnerable. So in this position, you guys should already be coming up with a plan to try to rotate to safety. And in situations like this, where you have to run into the open and you don't have any cover to utilize and you don't have a vehicle to take across the opening, um, playing the edge of the circle is actually a good strategy. But these guys do have a vehicle they could utilize. They could utilize. All right, and, and like I said, the circle did favor the other side of the street. However, there is still a sliver, kind of, uh, barely on our side. Again, these teams should be really focused on trying to get across right now. The longer this team waits to get safe, the closer players are going to get. And what I mean by that is the circle's big right now. The circle's still relatively big. But if these guys wait too long, the circle's going to start closing in. 
And then once the circle start closing in, these 25 enemies left, all of a sudden they're not as spread out, they're more clustered together. So it makes it harder for you to push out in the open. But fortunately for us, our squad is pushing across um, early before the circle closes in, which is again, a great, great ideal thing to do. All right, but now we're safe and we have a lot of money. This compound seems pretty clear. We haven't checked this building yet, but the buy station is still closed. So I would imagine there's nobody here. So with a big ass stack of money. Now you could get UAVs or some kill streaks. And with this type of circle, with being a lot of hills and trees and ridges and things like that, there's a probability that you may have to push out from the safety net, out from these buildings into the open and push, you know, a team that's already camping on the hill. So in situations like this, cluster strikes are extremely crucial. So I would definitely buy a cluster strike um, if you can. They might have enough for UAV as well, which would be my second thing I buy. Also, that way you can try to get some eyes on players around you. Now, not to mention, there were shots going off to the bunkers to our northwest um, towards this area. It's even pinged. So somebody should be looking this way. Unfortunately, orange isn't. Unfortunately, blue isn't. So the longer it takes for us to look at the direction we know enemies are, the more chance these enemies have to getting safe. So why would you allow the team to push you? And why would you allow yourself to not get these kills? We even have them pinged on the mini map and we're still not even worried about them. All right, but we're surrounded by a lot of teams. We got a team in the compound next to us with the most wanted bounty on us and other teammates near him. We've got a team, again, that I've been talking about by the bunkers. Um, and we have two teams over here actually engaging with each other. Um, if you're an opportunity to third party, this, that's pretty self-explanatory. Go ahead and third party, but again, don't worry too hard about killing them right now because they're going to have to push into the open eventually. And when they do, they'll be easier shots than they are now because they'll be closer to you. And also, um, they'll have to run in the open. They won't have any cover. And again, nobody is looking towards the edge of the circle. Nobody. If they would have, they could have sniped the guys out of the helicopter. They could snipe the guys running in. They could have done so many things to get these kills. They could increase their kill count. They wouldn't have to worry about them later on in the game. But now they've allowed the helicopter to get safe and change their position. I have no idea if he's part of the team, but the enemy did bail the helicopter. Again, guys, if you know where enemies are at and they have to come to you, do not hide. You wanna get visual on them. You don't. You wanna get an eye of what's going on. That way you can shoot them before they push your building. Never allow an enemy to come out of a bad spot and push your building out in the open. Um, this is terrible. And I know he flew a helicopter here, but again, he had to get in the helicopter that was vulnerable and easy headshot. We have a sniper. We could have literally been baiting the helicopter and sniped them the moment we got in. But instead, we were doing whatever it is we were doing. And now it looks like your boy's about to get shit on and he does. We still have your boy by the rock. And for some reason, again, nobody is looking that direction. Whether it's lack of callouts, whether it's not caring, it doesn't matter. Bad play. So we've allowed one of the teammates to push us and kill us, right? Regardless of getting him back, we allowed him to push and kill us. And we're still forgetting about the guy behind us at the rock. We wasted an entire magazine to hit somebody three times. An entire magazine to hit somebody three times. And he leaves the plate box. Pick the plate box up, bro. Pick it up. Pick it up, man. Don't leave it. Don't leave it. You're going to need it. All right, now we're in a position where we may, be, we may be rolling out too soon. I really hope these guys don't leave the compound to push the other compound because there's a huge probability it might come our way. Also, pay attention to cluster strikes. There's a cluster strike coming from the hill being shot at the compound to their left, and they need to be looking at that ridge because they can get some easy shots off. But instead, instead they're all just going to be back hiding in the building. All right, here we go. We got one guy out here trying to fight. I love it. Hey, he gets the knock. Good shit. Look, I understand aiming is hard in this game for a lot of people, but you gotta, you have to practice trigger discipline. Shoot when you see the target. Don't shoot if you don't. Honestly, there's no reason for that. I get missing your shots. That's fine. But when he's nowhere in the crosshair, nowhere near it, there's no reason for it at all. I don't know how he was able to hit those shots. I'm gonna chalk it up to the kill cam just being out of focus. I don't know why we're looting right now. I have no idea why we're looting. You don't need dead silence in this situation. Now, I like the fact that we're playing this wall. You wanna have, again, you wanna stay spread out. We have two teammates up here already safe. That's fine. You don't wanna cluster together at the end circle if you don't have to, right? We have this beautiful wall right next to us and we have a little bit of this building we can utilize. So 
Green and purple should both stay in this situation, and blue and orange should stay over here as well. There's two enemy teams left, though. I'm not sure if they're in the same buildings. I'm not sure if they're in the same compound. Just be aware, though, of not being too tunnel vision because he could be over here behind the cars. He could be somewhere. We don't know, right? Um, but I like the fact that right now they're split up and they can get two different lines of sight on the enemy and basically make it impossible for the team camping in here to push out because, again, they have no cover. All right, now it's a 2v4. The last thing you want to do is, is hide in a building in this situation. You want to get your eyes on everything going on. You want to launch the uh the streaks on the targets as well not not on the door next to him holy shit if they lose this fight bro <laughs> and ggs thank you for watching i really hope you enjoyed the gameplay if you did don't forget to leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel today now the whole purpose of doing this series again is to put you guys in situations and tell you guys what you should be doing and what you should not be doing this video had a lot of don't do's in it so i'm glad we we're able to analyze and break down this gameplay but you have a good one and until next time good luck in warzone thank you for watching i really hope you enjoyed the video if you did make sure you check out one of these two videos over there and also subscribe by clicking this button you have a good one and until next time keep on improving